Hello and welcome to this lovable course. I'm going to just get into things guys, I'm not going to explain too much here, but the idea behind this course is to give you the basics and also all of the things that I've learned so far using lovable to develop apps, to make websites, to rank on Google, etc. So the first episode, which is this episode that you're watching right now, is why lovable? Why do I like lovable compared to other things like bold on new, cursor, etc. The first thing that I really, really like about lovable is that it has intelligent prompting. And what, what do I mean by that? You could also call this intelligent model or just intelligence. Lovable's ability to take what you write here and translate that, not into just code, but also if you're using an AI model into prompts, etc., is better than anything that I've used. Now, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect they're using Anthropic 3.5 Sonnet, Claw 3.5 Sonnet, but I'm not, I, I, I don't know if, they, if that's actually true or not. Uh, it's the most intelligent system I've used, and it interprets what you're asking it instead of giving you a base level of whatever you're asking it, right? Something like bolt.new, what it'll do is it'll just give you a base level of what what you've asked it, right? But it's not going to give you a completely solid version of that. Lovable will give you a version of that that you actually want. So Lovable can craft good prompts, right? And when left to design systems, does a thorough job. So when it designs systems, when it creates a system for you, whether that be chained by... Uh, the chain of thought prompting system, whether that be um, just a completely different function that doesn't use AI, it doesn't matter. Its ability to create and design systems that are good is unmatched. The second thing that I really, really like about, about Lovable is integrations. Now, if we just go on Google here, And we just write lovable integrations. Now, what this is, this is the, okay, so obviously Bolt copied lovable and they also have Superbase. They also have GitHub. However, there's other things here, okay, that are very, very interesting. So let's just take a screenshot. So what does this mean? It means that, first of all, I suspect, I don't know if this is true, but I suspect that they update the prompt that is responsible for you know, connecting to GitHub or connecting to OpenAI. It will be updated with the latest documentation. Okay, so what that means is you don't have to worry about finding documentation. You don't have to worry if the implementation of the documentation is correct because anything that is integrated, you basically just say, so Superbase and GitHub are different. They have buttons on Lovable that allow you to connect to them. That's why they say native. Verified, what happens is, let's say you want to add email to your SaaS, right, that you're making on Lovable. Resend, you just say, set up resend to send emails to users when they make a purchase, when they do this, when they do that you know, create a whole email workflow for me, etc. That is possible with Lovable, right? To do this on something like um, bolt.diy or bolt.dev or cursor will be complicated, it'll be difficult. You'll have you'll struggle with this, right? You have to learn resend and understand it, understand how it works. But because it's both intelligent and has a resend integration you can literally just say to it, make me a SaaS, right, that does this, that, and the other. So you create the SaaS. Then you say, please add Stripe to it, and it, with three different pricing levels, let's say, and a free trial. It will do that. It will tell you how to set up Stripe. It will explain everything. Then you say, okay, now that I've done that, I want to send emails when someone makes a purchase. And then we say, oh, I want to add a, ch uh, a chatbot uh, for help, uh, support, you know, whatever. And then you want to power the SaaS, like the, the SaaS itself. Let's say it's a keyword tool that uses Claude. You can say, okay, I want to add Claude to the keyword tool. 
And you basically can make, I would say, right, with Lovable, you could make a fully functioning SaaS in an hour, right? Which is completely, completely insane. Integrations, huge part of the reason that I really like Lovable. It just makes things easier. You don't have to worry. You don't have to even have a .env file or create a .env file. You can literally, it will pop up and you just click and say, add my API key and you can add your API key, it's that easy. Now just saying so you know how to use integrations is pretty easy, you just say, um, let's go to a project that I already have. Oh wait, I can't change that project, it's connected to a live website. Let's say, let's add Stripe to take payment, right? And then what this is gonna do is it will code stripe for us and then tell us how to add our api key etc right so we have a superbase set up stripe account add secret key create the checkout functionality implement the payment ui it will do all of that for us but we just need to do um these things here right because it can't do these for us yet i suspect that lovable will be able to eventually so you click here, you click here, you get all this information, you give it all of that information here, it will add it to the .env, it will then do the rest of these steps and you have Stripe added to your project. It's that easy, it's never been that easy before in the history of of time, right? This took me, that took me like eight hours to learn how to do that um, without Lovable when I just did it myself. Okay, so the next reason that I really, really like Lovable and why I recommend it is the Superbase integration. Now I know Bolt has since, I don't want to say copied again, but like since done this themselves. Um, yeah, it's not the only one that does this, but the huge advantage of this is that you don't have to set up a backend, right? Ordinarily, you can do an open AI call, right? Using uh, no backend. But you need to use, you know, a specific thing called um, allow with browsing, and it's just not it's not very easy, right? And that's just with OpenAI. If you want to do anything more complicated that requires a third party API or a backend, the cool thing with Lovable is that you only need to have a front end, and then you use Superbase to call functions for you. So what, what does that actually mean? Like, what the hell am I talking about? Let's just click edit code here. Um, I just wanna, I just wanna see the code and I'll explain. So ordinarily, right? So th this, this is our craft. This is uh, this website here, right? What this website is, is it's a lead gen website for our agency, okay? In the United States. And this content here is generated by ChatGPT, right? At the point of when someone clicked clicked this page, this content was generated, and then it was stored dynamically. It was it was created dynamically at the time of someone clicking it. In this case, Google, Google's crawlers clicking it, and then it um, cached that content, right? That's not important, but so. Somewhere here, there is a, if I go on Superbase, Functions, uh, Generate SEO Content, Index.ts, right? So here, there are, there's something in here that is creating the content, right? Yeah, so it's, it's content generation.ts inside utils file, right? So ordinarily, what you'd have to do is you'd have to have this as a separate f uh, backend in order to run this. But... In this case, that's not true because we're using Superbase in order to call this function in the cloud. Now, I'm not a developer. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to explain this in simple terms. Um, and I might even be wrong about the whole backend thing. But in my experience, you either have to set up a backend or some kind of uh, server to call the function, right? But with Superbase, you don't have to do that. And you can just use something called uh, Superbase functions or edge functions, I think they're called. 
and effectively you call the function in the cloud instead of um, on your own server. Now, one of the other things I really, really like about Lovable, the fourth thing I love about Lovable, is the select and change, right? This is this little button here, select, right? This is a live website. Just so you know, so craftagencyus.com. If I wanted to, using Bolt, for example, okay, or even using Cursor, if I wanted to, I don't know, change this to have an underline under it, Bolt would be at risk of deleting code or whatever. It might change it, it might change other things. Cursor is the same. It always tries to rewrite things that you haven't asked it to rewrite. Okay, but if I just click the little select button here, and then you can select any div, anything, any picture, any whatever you want, right? You can swap pictures out like this. Um, you can change anything, right? It's like having the power of something like Elementor or Divi, but on Next.js, which <laughs> is crazy when you think about it. So let's just say, make this title underlined right it will only change that it will change nothing else and that is how me as a complete non-designer took craftagency.ie which is this beautifully designed website on uh, WordPress right and made this which although is not exactly the same it's pretty good as a as a version of of this right it's not the same i understand that but it's it's pretty close right and there we go that's now underlined and then another thing that i do love about lovable which i didn't actually have written down just because it's it's kind of like standard these days to have this feature but now i've made this change right i i don't know if you guys saw but the last change that i did was 18 days ago right this website's just been sitting here since the 5th of January, the website, nothing, I haven't changed it, I haven't touched anything. This is like my instance of this website on Lovable, but it's also connected to GitHub. So if I go back now to the home page, you'll see that there should be, okay, there, there's not an underline yet, but, oh, there is. So that's another really, really cool thing about Lovable. It's like, this is my, it's almost like my WordPress backend where it's stored. And I can edit anything I want at any time within here. Now you can also edit code and download it and use cursor or whatever. But I just love the fact that like you can just change something here and it's just automatically on the website. I will be talking about that in future uh, future episodes of this course. Now one special mention that I, I, I do want to just quickly talk about is um, the fact that you can... It, it's a new feature. I haven't tested it yet. But it says here, and if this does work, and it does seem to work um, from what I've seen, you can now do Figma into Lovable, which is completely nuts, right? If you know a good designer, like I do, they can design, you both can design, right, in writing, like everything so like it's kind of hard to explain like let's say you wanted to make a SAS where like they I'm just gonna use Harbor as an example someone puts their sitemap and it generates keyword ideas right and they can select a keyword idea that they like they click it and it takes it to the writer just like Harbor does right what the way that we did this was Rowan designed everything on Figma and then a team took that and put it on uh, Vanilla React, which was a <laughs> yeah a terrible idea. Um, so we're actually on Vanilla React. Do not recommend, guys. Do not recommend that. Um, but yeah, it, like if I could go back in time now, I would start this whole process again, and I would just do this myself with uh, a Lovable, because I would take this Figma design that Rowan has that we have. And I would just run it through Lovable and just make everything exactly as I want it. And the really cool thing is like you can write like open AI call to do X right here. 
and then Lovable, I suspect, I don't know for a fact, I, I haven't tested it, would then prompt what needs to be inside this specific open AI call, which is very, very interesting to me. You can basically design a whole SAS step by step, every prompt, everything, put that in Figma, and then run that through Lovable, which is, yeah, completely insane. I do need to test it though, so I don't want to spend any more time on that, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention that. So there are all the positives. Let's just talk about the negatives quickly, just because, you know, I'm fair, I'm balanced. There are some negatives here for sure. It's expensive. It's very expensive for um, the amount of calls you get, but I, th I, I don't mind paying for something that can do what um, Lovable can do. That's me personally. Obviously, I have maybe a larger budget than some people so i do understand um like i i am part of a business so obviously i'm just using business funds to do a lot of my experiments so i do understand that it, it's expensive so just be wary of that um it has low-ish limits uh although these two think th these are kind of connected because um it's relatively expensive right it's only 50 dollars a month for higher limits so it's relatively expensive compared to something like bolt which will give you you can make more things on bolt than you could on uh lovable there's no automation i'd be interested to see if they do go down the route of like you just describing what you want and then it just doing several steps for you um and then just gives you a finished app rather than you that, you know, struggling and working away and trying to get what you want out of the app. This would be cool if they do do automation. I would love that, but yeah. So it uses Vite. I, I don't, this isn't necessarily a disadvantage. It's just I don't have that much experience with Vite. But one thing that I don't like is that it's limited to one tech stack, right? It's annoying that it's limited to one tech stack. I believe you can't even use Next.js as far as I understand it. You have to use their exact tech stack, which, yeah, I'm just, I, I personally don't, I personally don't like that. Okay, I think we'll wrap up the first episode there. That is the kind of basics of why I think Lovable is the best, I'm gonna say no code, but it's not really a no code, but best no code um, AI development software available right now. Very, very interested to see what people think of this video. If people want to help me direct this course, that would be amazing. Um, I'll just give you my ideas right now, and then if anyone wants to add anything, feel free. So, second episode will be prompting. Third episode will be building. But I was thinking of splitting that into several episodes where I just build different things, like build a blog, build a SaaS, you know, whatever, etc. Um, and then fourth episode is launching slash maintaining, right? So yeah, I'll leave the first episode of this there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.